Lord has made and let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to the Council of Bishops of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, the call to pray. The word of God says we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. The African Methodist Episcopal Church has a rich history and heritage of impacting the African diaspora with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have survived several perils. We have survived the perils of enslavement, colonialism, apartheid, Jim Crow, separate but equal, ethnic cleansing with new categories of isms, excessive and deadly, vo uh, and deadly force. Our perseverance is rooted in the grace of God. Our resilience is empowered by the Holy Spirit. We're durable disciples of Jesus Christ who do more than pick up the pieces and move on in uncertain times or from catastrophic events. The African Methodist Episcopal Church does not merely bounce back from horrendous hurricanes and rampant racism and excessive force. We dig deep into our spiritual disciplines. That's why this call to prayer. So won't you please join us Gather your family around in your home, in the altar that you have. We may be troubled. We may be distressed. We may be perplexed and persecuted, but we are not forsaken by God, nor destroyed by uncertainty. After all these things we've been through, we still have joy. We now welcome and call upon the senior Bishop of African Methodism, Bishop Adam Jefferson Richardson, who will give us a welcome and lead us in our first prayer. And we are thankful for this opportunity to draw near with praise and to honor your name. God, we thank you that you have allowed us this privilege to be together across the length and breadth of your great universe. And God, we don't think that we're giving you any information about our situation. You know us all too well. We heard our forebears say that you sit high and you look low. Therefore, you see the end from the beginning and nothing catches you by surprise. You see the continuation of racist policing and the death of unarmed. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-hmm.
our lives still belongs to you. And even in the, these terrific times, we recognize this and call on you, for you are the God who brought us through danger seen and unseen. It is your amazing grace that continues to impact our lives. Where we once were lost, you found us. Some, Sometimes we allow challenges to get in our way and direct our path. But we truly know that you can fix these trials that besiege us because you did it before. We trust that you will do it again as you hold the world in your hands and we are your people. God, in this time of health struggles worldwide, racial discord, and this is from those who have sworn to protect and serve people, we look to you because as our Savior, you are the Prince of Peace. You are the God of all righteousness. And you can and will deliver us from all the attempt to impede our call to justice, to love mercy, to walk humbly with God. It is a time when political leaders setting off in their duties God, we call on you right now to show us all the way. God, when we do not observe the right of other people, when we are callous in our thoughts and action, we allow people to suffer, and this is sinful. Forgive us this day and help us to realize the pain of others. We believe in your word, and we believe that you will pull us through the chaotic state. Have mercy on us all and bring healing throughout the land. For we believe your word found in Second Chronicles 7.14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from thy wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Creator God, help us keep our eyes on you at this time in our lives when pain and hurt and causing so much stress, so much trauma and strain. When it feels like no one cares, Keep our attention on the one who opened blind eyes, strengthen crippled legs, give deaf ears hearing, keep hearing. Keep us focused on the fact that Jesus said we can do even more than he has done. God of justice, we don't think like you, but we ask for the courage to show others justice when food supplies are low, clothes are worn and torn, when housing is beneath our needs. Help us be for each other. When leaders are more concerned of themselves, please give us what we need to show them Christ. On the cross of Calvary, Jesus prayed for, forgive them. That is our prayer today. Open our eyes that we may see the spirit and love bestowed on us. Forgive us too for our failures. When we think what we can do to them, focus on what you can do for them. God, we have left so much out of this prayer. Right is on our heart to love, help, and through thy son, seek peace, justice, and healing. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.
Thank you, uh, Bishop uh, Frank Curtis Cummings, for your fervent prayer. And now Bishop uh, Cousins, Philip R. Cousins, is poised now to lead us further in our prayer service. Bishop God of grace and glory, majesty and power, thou who has brought us from our early beginnings until the present moment, we come distressed at this time, beset by calamities which have hit us from all sides. Things that we never thought would happen are happening. Things that we never imagined would take place are taking place. And so we come now, Lord, asking for your strength, for your guidance. We have a health crisis. COVID-19 is destroying families, destroying lives, destroying communities. And in the midst of it, the economic downfall which cause incomes to be lost, families to be torn apart, children to go hungry, homes to be lost, families to be split. And on top of that, it just raised the level of our understanding where the cover which has held the racial divide pulled from our eyes. So now we see in the midst of the health crisis, in the midst of the economic despair, we see now the racial divide by racism, which has divided and caused this nation to go through the tremors of a storm which besets us and causes us sometimes to wonder. So in the midst of this, we climb to the watchtower of our imagination and we cry out from our towers, oh Lord, how long? We have rhetoric, which we've heard for years, rhetoric which sometimes stays only on the paper. And we come now asking, when will rhetoric become reality? When will the words which we talk about become deeds? And in this time of sheltering in place, it only helps us as Christians to get closer to God. For when we shelter, we find our need that God has placed in us to understand and know that God can bring us through any trial. So as we shelter, we learn about ourselves and we know that the church is more than just the building. It's more than just the music. It's more than just the trappings that make us want to go. The church is those who are called by Christ to understand and to feed the hungry, to give help to those who suffer, to give freedom and justice to all who seek it. So in the midst of this triple, triple pandemic, which has swept us, we come in African Methodism and we pray that the God who has kept us from the days of our blacksmith shop till now, the God who has brought us through all the trials of civil rights, the God who has helped us train and teach people how to live, the God who has made the sunshine of joy flow through our churches, may this same power of the God that has kept us take us so that as we sit sheltered in place, but not sheltered from God, learning in place, how to be better Christians, learning how to express ourselves, learning the message that the church must give in this time when we do things not by fellowshipping together, but when we understand the need to recognize the significance of communicating verily, to communicate and to understand and know that the church is more than the building. The church is those who are called by God, who believe the saviorhood of Christ Jesus, who understand through their deeds, their action and their faith that God will lead us. So we come now knowing that as you have kept us, as you have led us, you'll bring us through this time, Lord, because you're a God who's never left us. You'll keep us strong for this time, Lord, because you're a God who gives us might and gives us strength, who lifts us from the down pits of our despair. And when this time is over, we not only will shout hallelujah, we not only pray, thank you, Lord, but we will come out stronger. The church will be your church.
the communities will be your communities. Justice and freedom and equity will run down like the mighty stream that we want them to be. And we will stand on the mountaintop of our then now walls of crying out and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us through this time. These pandemics only make us stronger. Your grace is more than sufficient. So now help us to continue to be servants, feed the hungry, preach to the needy, close those who are out of need, and help us always as African Methodist Episcopalians to recognize God is our father, people everywhere are our brothers, and we believe in the power of the Holy Spirit, which has kept us in would sustain us and hold us and keep us. This is our prayer. This is our hope. This is our joy. This time of distress will not kill us. It will strengthen us so the church and your kingdom will be stronger when it's all over. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And you have been already duly welcomed by our host today, our moderator, Bishop McKenzie. And we thank God for you all over the world of African Methodism and wherever we have a footprint uh, all over the world in, in the great name of our great Christ. And so we invite you to pray. Precious God, you are holy indeed. It is your property is always to have mercy. And so for this reason, we confess not only our sins, which are many, but also our need of you, which is great. Therefore, we seek your mercy, your love, and your kindness. We're thankful for this opportunity to draw near with praise and honor to your name. God, you're so worthy. And we do not think we are giving you any information about our situation, because you know us all too well. We heard our forebears say that you sit high and you look low. Therefore, you see the end from the beginning. And nothing catches you by surprise. You see the continuation of racist policing and the death of unarmed black men. You see peaceful protests turn destructive and violent. You see turmoil in the streets in various corners of the world. Galvanized around a mutual idea, an idea whose time has come equal justice under the law. You see incompetence in high places of governmental administration, leaving people sick and vulnerable and dying from a pandemic. And so Holy Father, in all these matters, we pray for the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Thank you for the ministry and the opportunity of service you've given to us. And so we pray for peace and God let it begin with us. We pray for justice around the world. We pray for healing all over the land. And we pray these prayers in the name of our great Christ. Jesus is his name, your son, our savior. Amen. <laughs> Somebody calls me his own I can hear 
Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jada. Thank you for blessing us in song. For those of you who are joining us, this is the call to prayer from the Council of Bishops of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. We want you to share this prayer service with others. Uh, have a watch party. Uh, pray with those who are in your household. This is a time where we must seek the Lord's face. And praise God, the Episcopal leadership of the AME Church is calling all of us to seek heaven right now. Now, uh, our first bishop, Bishop Richard Allen prayed, how can I lift my people? Now, Bishop Carolyn Tyler Guidry will pray, followed by Bishop Frank Madison Reed III, and followed by Bishop Ronnie Brailsford. Come on, my brothers and sisters, let's seek the Lord's face. The other day I saw a little girl that reminded me of several of my great grandchildren asking a policeman, are you gonna shoot us? So today I pray for the children. Creator God, we thank you for the privilege of communicating with you through prayer in the name of Jesus. You gave us life. You are the source of all our lives. And you have given us children to take care of and to love as you love us. Children are the source of our joy, our hope, and our future. And yet we confess that we have not lived up to our calling in this world. Children around us are afraid. Children are dying of hunger, of disease and of the violence in the world. Innocent lives are abandoned and abused. Oftentimes we feel helpless and powerless in the face of such despair and brokenness. Have mercy on us. Forgive us our neglect and our complacency. Gracious Lord, there is so much going on in our world today it's not what you wanted it to be. And the most affected are our innocent children. Lord, I pray that you continue to be there for them and let the world know that they are a gift from you alone. Grant us the courage to trust you and to lead the world toward you. Help us to see and to know that children are our future and our purpose for being. And we must protect and comfort the children. Thank you for the promise of your abiding presence in our lives. We commit our lives to you. We commit our children to you. Use us, O oh God, as instruments of your love and your peace, especially for the children of the world. Grant us peace, O oh Lord. Grant us peace. Hear the children cry. Protect the children from the evil of this world. Sense their fear and touch their souls with love. Then, O oh Lord, grant us courage to stand. Grant us courage to step out. Grant us courage to act with and for the children. Comfort the children. Protect the children. Bless the children of the world. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we come to you now thankful that you are our divine creator and our divine parent. We come to you now in the name of Jesus, thanking you that through the technology, you have connected the AME Church militant all over this world. We come, O oh God, thanking you for Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Sanctifier, our Deliverer, our Liberator, our Black Messiah. We thank you, O oh God, that on this day, on this first Sunday in June, we are, pa we are pausing to remember now that Jesus came for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. And so we thank you now, O oh God, for the finished work of Jesus Christ, 
who has destroyed the works of the flesh, the world, and the devil. We stand now on the finished work of Christ, and we pray now that we would take off the old man and the old woman and the old way of doing church, and that we would put on the new man, the new woman, the new young man, the new young woman, the new children and the new church, the new African Methodist Episcopal Church in the mighty name of Jesus. As we pause now to remember Brianna Taylor, as we pause now to remember Brother Arbery, as we pause now to remember George Floyd and their families, we remember the 10 million bones of African slaves who came over on the Middle Passage and bones are now on the Atlantic Ocean. We thank you now, God, in the name of Jesus, as we remember Denmark Vesey and Nat Turner and the slaves that rebelled with them who were hung and many times castrated. We pause now to remember in this month of June, the Emmanuel Nine and the assassination of the pastor of Emmanuel, who was a great grassroots leader and a organic intellectual and organizer. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you now that we are to finish the work that Jesus began. And so now, God, we praise and glorify your name that with all the bad news that we are living through, the bad economic news, the bad ecological news, the bad news regarding COVID, the bad news across the board, that there's good news in Jesus Christ, that greater works than these has African Methodism done in the name of Jesus and greater works than these shall we do. So God, now we praise and glorify your name in the name of Jesus that the dry bones are connected we're filled with your spirit and we stand up the church militant in Jesus name. Free at last, free at last. Thank God almighty Lord. African Methodism is free at last. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, our father, we acknowledge you today in all of your sovereignty that in spite of all that we see that is going on around us in the world, and even many things that we do not understand, we are grateful that we have the assurance that in spite of everything, you are still God. You're still the King of King and Lord of Lords, and you're still in charge. God, we acknowledge you and we say thank you for your sovereignty and for not leaving us alone. We thank that God that you are still the God of Romans 8, 28, that says that all things work together for the good, for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. God, we must admit when we look many times with our natural eyes, we don't see all the good that you will bring even out of the evil that this world and man and Satan would try to per per perpetuate. But who would have thought of oh God just less than two weeks ago that the death of one black man by the name of George Floyd would be that proverbial needle that broke the camel's back, would be that thing that was set off a worldwide protest, God, to usher in a new era of social justice. Who would have ever thought, oh God, that what the enemy meant for evil, he thought there would be just another black man dead. But he should have learned that over 2,000 years ago, when there was a black man named Jesus who hung, bled, and died on an old rugged cross, he thought he had the victory then. But hallelujah, he ushered in our forgiveness, ushered in our salvation, and though he was buried, he raised to live forever so that those of us who are of resurrection faith know that in spite of all that we're going through, hallelujah, we already know that we win in the end, that we know the end of the story. But we thank you to God that in the midst of the struggle, you have promised never to forsake us nor leave us alone. 
but to be with us in the midst of these trying times. You've given us your assurance that we shall have tribulation, but to be of good cheer, knowing that you have already overcome the world. God, we're asking your blessings upon us now as we deal with the pandemic of COVID-19. But also, God, as we deal with the pandemic of racism, a virus that has been pandemic long before COVID-19, we pray, oh God, for your healing. We pray for your protection. We pray for your deliverance. We pray, God, for your divine intervention to make a difference in the midst of the struggle. And oh God, we pray for though for all of us. We thank you to God for the leadership of the African Methodist Episcopal Church that continues to be a vanguard to remind the world of what we are called to do and to be about. To do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly before our God. We pray, O oh God, that you will send down your holy power anew, that the Holy Spirit will move on the hearts and minds of men and women, transforming hatred into love, transforming, God, hearts that are hard to hearts that are soft, Lord, transforming lives, O oh God, that we might become all that you would have us to be. And God, we especially pray today for those who would dare to bow to other images, that they would remember that Jesus was taken up to the temple. And at the top, Satan said to him, bow down. If you just bow down to me, look over, I'll give you all that this world has to offer. God, we pray for our brothers and sisters who claim to love God that you would deliver them from bowing down just for power and for money and to practice supremacy. For God, you have called all of us to be a one race, and that is the human race. We pray now, God, for all over this world that you will bring healing, that you will bring deliverance, that indeed transform hearts and minds will be such that we will do what you have called us to do, and that is to love God with all our heart, our minds, and our soul, and to love our neighbor, regardless of his or her color, but to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. For you have challenged us. How can we say we love God, whom we have not seen, and hate our brothers of whom we have seen. God, we pray now for a spiritual revolution that will bring about also social justice in the earth realm. We thank you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Episcopal District. Praise God, I do have fond memories of serving in that district. And now we're going to hear from the current uh, Episcopal servant, uh, Bishop Stafford Ricker, uh, followed by Bishop Ann Henning Byfield. And then our concluding prayer in this segment is Bishop David Daniels. for the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Mm -hmm. We thank you for its bishops. We thank you for its personnel worldwide. But I pause now, God, to thank you for a particular personnel of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, the pastors. We pray over the pastor's emotions we pray as they are separated from their flock. We pray over their priesthood of belief. We pray, O oh God, for their purpose. We thank you for them, and we thank you for each assignment that we have given to men and women all over the footprint of African Methodism worldwide. We pray, O oh God, for their spouses. We pray for them. We pray, O oh God, for these pastors assigned over congregations. We ask, O oh God, that you would bless their people, bless their congregations, bless their preaching power, bless them as they have to shift to a new level of communication. Where they cannot congregate, God, help them to communicate. Help them to communicate in new ways, in new venues. Even, oh God, that young man in North Lesotho who has to catch a horse to cross the river to get to his people. We pray over him. We pray, oh God, over each and every pastor across the connection. We thank you, God. We praise you. We honor you, we believe in you, that you would keep and sustain every pastor, wherever they are, wherever they serve, in the communities and in the families that they touch from day to day. In the blood of Jesus we pray, amen. We come with you with reverence, knowing that without you there is no justice or peace. We submit ourselves to you that the earth is growing and groaning at the violence perpetrated against Blacks in this country and around the world. We're tired of another Black person slaughtered, assaulted, demeaned, lynched, beaten, violated in their homes, on the streets, in the park, in police cars, hotels, school dormitories, and schools, or wherever they may be. Our spirits cry out, O oh Lord, how long before the end of murders in our communities? How long, O oh God, from police action murders and inner violence? Our spirits grieve, O oh God, at the watching of the police officer's knee on George Floyd's neck. Our spirits grieve at the death of Brianna and Alberry and, and Sandra Bland and Brother Castile and Eric Donna and all. We are more than frustrated. We are more than angry. We are tired of the pathology of the right to harm us and mock us and destroy us and desecrate us at the very right to live. For God, we come right now knowing that even in the midst of our pain, you, O oh God, we grieve not as if we don't have any hope. Holy Ghost, remove the core of this demon. Destroy the demon of racial and sexual hatred. 
kill the underbelly of this environment in the United States and France and England and in Italy and Brazil. Kill the underbelly and send the fire to stump out the insidious demonic spirit. Open eyes to the complacency of those who refuse to see. Open ears, O oh God, to those who shut off the screams of the oppressed. Open the mouths of privileged, silent Christians who are silent and racist, institutional, impacting practices of Gestapo police and poor schools and money-making prisons and protections and, and, and saturating us with food, desert, and drugs. But, oh God, you are the God that can bring life back from ashes. And so take the ashes of those who have been murdered and restore life. Take the ashes of burned communities and rebuild a place of peace and purification. Help us to take the ashes and bury them so they bring growth and new life in our communities. Oh God, help us with our unbelief of continued racist Republicans who allow this president to divide and they participate in that division. Oh God, help us with our unbelief that our hopes will be forever smashed. But we know who you are. So be swift with justice. Be swift with vengeance, oh God. Be swift with your punishment. Be swift to empower us to live. Be swift, oh God, to remind us that you once before took the African Methodist Episcopal Church and empowered us to bring life in voting and bring life in religion and bring life in education and bring life in justice. Empower us, oh God, that we can keep challenging and keep voting and keep praying and keep believing that we can keep telling God's people that no matter what is said and done, you are still the God. That you created us to be perfect and to be perfectly good. Keep mobilizing for a new response to police action. That we can keep fighting that our flesh will be healed, not just from the COVID virus, but from the virus of racism and sexism and xenophobia and despair. Help us to know, oh God, in our despair, you are still a good God, that you love us, that you bless us, and we praise you and we honor you that the fight is not over and the victory is won because you are our God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Daniels, won't you begin leading us in prayer? Almighty and everlasting God, omnipotent, you who have all power, created of all things and all men in the universe, we come as serving leader gathered to call upon you, God, that as the prophet Amos, that justice and righteousness will flow will flow throughout the land, God, in the name of Jesus. That your rightness and your power will flow not just throughout the breadth and length of the United States of America, where we find those who feel that they are better than us because of the color of their skin. We come against them, God, in the name of Jesus. We pray not not a prayer against white folk, but white, uh, white folk who believe that they are better than us, white folk who believe that we are not made in your image and language. We bound them in the powerful, precious name of Jesus. We pray that your power will flow, that through the power of the Holy Spirit, that you will reign upon all nation, God from Angola to Arizona to Alabama, God, in the name of Jesus, from Namibia to Nashville, and from South Africa to South Carolina, from, uh, from Morovia to Montana, God, in the name of Jesus, we come against the attack of COVID-19. And those who are sick, those who are affected, we know that you are the healer, so we pray for divine healing. Heal them by the power of your Holy Spirit, God, in the name of Jesus. We come against every demonic stronghold. We come against racism and discrimination. Wherever they are found, we bound it in the name of Jesus. Give us power, God. 
Allow us to know that we are the hand and not the tail. That we are blessed and not cursed. That we are above and not beneath. That in spite of what the police and the law enforcement in this nation and elsewhere will try to destroy us as a people. We come believing and declaring and decreeing that we are more than conqueror. That no weapons form against us shall prosper. That we will prevail because together we are strong in you. No power in hell can destroy us. So we come to lift up the bishops of the church, active and retire their spouses, their children, their grandchildren, the presiding elder connection globally, God in the name of Jesus, their spouses and their ministry, the pastors, God, throughout the connection, their ministry, God in the name of Jesus, perform a miracle, because you are a miracle working God. We decree and declare that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we are coming out of this strong. We are coming out of this a global demonic pandemic, uh, COVID-19, more powerful, uh, more equipped. God, in the name of Jesus, we're coming out as conqueror through Jesus who died, but rose again that we might have life and have it abundantly. So we pray this prayer, God, touch by the power of your Holy Spirit and heal, heal the nations of the world. Heal the leaders of the world. Speak through them in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty, powerful, precious, magnificent name we pray. Amen. that we come at such a time as this in the month of June to remember this lone gunman that walked into the middle of Emmanuel AME Church. It broke our hearts. I always say it broke our hearts, but it did not break our spirits. And we find ourselves again in this racial pandemic, uh, once again, lifting our voices and praying and working for change. Now we will hear prayers from Bishop Samuel Green, presiding prelate of the 7th Episcopal District, uh, Bishop Michael Mitchell, presiding prelate of the 12th Episcopal District, Bishop Julius McAllister, uh, the presiding prelate of the 8th Episcopal District, and then Bishop Reginald T. Jackson, presiding Bishop 6th Episcopal District, and you will come in that order. Father, I stretch my hands to thee no other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, all whither shall I go? O oh God, I help in ages past. I hope for years to come. I shelter from the stormy blast and our eternal home. We come before you today, God, with our heads bowed and our hearts humble. We gather today as a faith community from across this world, recognizing that our land in whatever region we live in is wounded. Wounded by governments and leaders who have lost a sensitivity and a heart for the people that they are governed. 
we in America are wounded by a president who seeks to be applauded and worshiped and by others in leadership positions who desire to lift up him and his agenda, no matter how wicked and evil it is. We're wounded by the neglected blood, sweat, and tears shared to protect the rights of every American to vote in as a citizen in this country. We're wounded by state legislators across this country who have enacted voter ID laws that disenfranchise minorities, students, the elderly and the poor. Wounded by a capitalistic industrial complex designed to make us want more as one third of our population lives with obesity. Wounded by emotions of guilt, doubt, and isolation, which lead to depression and mental illness. Wounded by an education system of inequality that limits the potential of our children wounded by a judicial system that profits from the incarcerated and diminishes their hopes, wounded by a law enforcement community that abuses and misuses their power against people of color, wounded by systematic racism in every arena of our lives. For God we come asking you, God, to pull back the scales of blindness on the eyes of the people in America. That they may see, God, that you are speaking in the midst of this pandemic of COVID-19, that you're speaking in the midst of this racial pandemic that we're facing in this world. For as you struck the Washington Monument on last Thursday, the central symbol between Congress, the White House, and the Senate. Let them see, God, that there is a shock going through this nation that says that no longer will we stand for, sit back and allow injustice to be perpetrated against our people. That, we're sh that, that the shock that lets you know that it's just not African Americans crying out about the injustices, but it's African-Americans, black, white, it's, it's poor, it's rich, it's middle class, upper class, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a smorgasbord of people who have come to the point where they recognize that enough is enough. And today, God, we find ourselves like the prophet Jeremiah pondering the question, is there a bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? And where is the healing for our wounded nation? So Lord, today we're asking you to be a cardiologist and change our wounded hearts so that we can love one another. Be that ophthalmologist and change our wounded eyes so that we can look injustices in the face. Be and audiologists and change our wounded ears so that we can hear you clearly. Be a neurologist and change our wounded minds so that we can reimagine our possibilities. Be a podiatrist and change our wounded feet so that we won't stray from the places where we met thee. Be a pathologist because only you can take what was dead on a Friday and resurrect it on a Sunday. Hear our prayer today, God, as we call upon you, as we call upon your name, as we call upon that name where the Bible declares that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. God, we call on you today because we know, God, that our help is in you. We bind the presence of evil everywhere. We bind the presence of evil everywhere. And God, we pray now for the healing of this world, the healing of this world, Africa, 
the Caribbean, Europe, Asia, America, hear our cry today. We're crying out, God. The bloods of our the blood of our forefathers and foremothers, they are the blood is crying out. Heal our land. Release us of the pain, the hurt, the injustices. Hear our cry. We are calling on you, God. We no longer want to be suffocated by the ills of this society. No longer want to cry out. We can't breathe because of the prejudices and the racism and the inequalities and the injustices that we face on a daily basis. We pray now, God, that you would give this nation a divine respirator that will cause all of us to breathe out peace, breathe out love, breathe out hope, breathe out peace. God, we know that one day we all will have to stand before you, the righteous judge, and give an account of our stewardship. On that day, let it be said that the AME Church refused to be silent in the midst of this chaos. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Most wise and eternal God, our Father. God is once again that you approach your throne of mercy, the throne of grace. It's so once again, God, that we pause recognizing who you are. You are our God. God, you are our maker, you are our creator. You are really our all and our all. God, you know everything that's going on in our world. You know what we experience from day to day. Uh, you know about the crisis, COVID-19, how it has affected the lives of so many. God, you know about the racism. You, you know about the injustices that are taking place in our world right now. Uh, we come today confessing that through many dangers, Pause and snares. God, we really have already come. We confess today, God, that we didn't make it on our own power. We didn't make it on our own strength. But God, it was your grace. It was your mercy that brought us safely thus far along the way. And God, we want to just pause to say thank you. Because we know that you're not just the God of yesterday. You're the God of today, you're the God of tomorrow. God, just like you took care of our four parents, our four mothers and our forefathers, you know, God, that in the midst of what we're experiencing right now, that you're more than able to still take care of us. And therefore, God, right now, in the name of Jesus, Come once again, God, humbling ourselves before you. Because your word is still true, God. You told us that if we would humble ourselves and if we would just pause just to have a little talk with you, I mean, God, if we would just take the time out to pray. God, therefore, we come at this moment thanking you, God, that we can have the opportunity to call upon your name. God, knowing and believing that you're still a prayer answering God. God, I want to thank you for all of the prayers that have gone before this prayer. But God, right now, in the name of Jesus, I ask one more time that you would just hear our prayer. God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would open up your hit windows of heaven and God, bring about healing, bring about deliverance. God, bring about peace today. God, do what only you're able to do. And I pray, God, right now in the name of Jesus that you will continue to touch minds and touch hearts today. I thank you, God, for the African Methodist Episcopal Church. I 
Thank you, God, for the bishops and leaders of the church. God, I thank you for every clergy person, for every missionary, for every lay person, for every young adult. God, right now, in the name of Jesus, cover us, God, with your blood. I know that if you cover us, God, that we shall be covered. God, if you shield us, God, that we shall be protected. God, right now, as your people walk the streets, God, in protest, I pray right now in the midst of COVID-19, God, that you will provide your shield of protection. I pray, God, right now in the name of Jesus, that even as we walk peacefully, God, that you will cause us to know that there is a bright side, God, that this too shall pass. And, I, and God, right now in the name of Jesus, even as we call on your name, God, we so much remember, God, those who have been affected, God, in in, in, li in their lives being taken. And therefore, God, we come right now, God, in remembrance of Ahmad Aubrey. God, we stand up for him because he's no longer able to take a job. God, we come today in memory of Sandra uh, uh, Bland, God, who cannot drive. God, we come today in memory standing up for Brianna Taylor, God, who cannot sleep. God, we come today standing up for Michael Brown, who cannot raise his hand any longer. God, we come today standing in the gap for Tamir Rice, who, who cannot play anymore. We come today, God, standing in memory of Trayvon Martin, who, who, who just had a pack of Skittles in his pocket. God, we come today in, in memory of Jordan Davis, God, who's no longer able to listen to his music. God, we come today in memory of Eric Gardner and George Floyd, who, who cry out, I cannot breathe. God, right now, breathe your spirit upon us today. Bring justice to this land. I pray right now in the name of Jesus, that even as we make our way, God, to the voting box, box. I pray, God, and even as we cast our ballots, God, I pray that even as we walk along this journey, that you will cause your people not to become weary, but God, give us strength, give us power, God, from day to day, God, to be able to make a change in this world, because I know that you have the power, God. I pray that when we get weak, God, when the enemy tries to destroy, continue to destroy us, when they decide, decide to try to make us sidetrack, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would give us what we need, God, that we can still stand. Because, God, we know that this world is still yours. It still belongs to you. And therefore, God, right now, in the name of Jesus, continue to have your own way, God. I know and I believe, God, that if you have your own way, hallelujah, that everything will be all right. God, I believe that if you have your own way, God, that deliverance can take place, God. If you have your own way, God, that justice will rain down, God. If you, if you have your own way, God, those things that appear to be impossible with humankind, I know, God, that they are more than possible with you. And therefore, God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that each and every day of our lives that you will cause us to seek you. God, seek you not just sometime, but God, start all through the day, God, that we'll seek your will, seek your direction. Because, God, we know that if we follow your directions, that everything, God, will be all right. God, we bless you. We thank you, God, for having done that which you said you were going to do. For your wonderful work and power, God, we say thank you. For deliverance, we say thank you. For peace. We say thank you for the yokes that have been broken, God. We say thank you for the deliverance that's taking place right now. We say thank you, God. You are mind regulator. You are a hard fixer. Therefore, God, hear our cry today. Grant I every petition is in the name of Jesus that we pray and we ask it all in the people of God declare, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. God of grace and God of glory, on thy people, pour thy power, crown the ancient church's story, bring it, bring its bud to glorious flower, grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this hour. Oh God, here we are again, your sons and daughters from across the length and breadth 
of the African Methodist Episcopal Church on this another Sunday afternoon. Lord, you know a lot has transpired since we last assembled. Though our church buildings and our houses of worship are closed, we are still having church. We are still witnessing the movement of the power of your Holy Spirit as a mighty rushing wind, even as it was on the day of Pentecost. Since we last assembled, many have recovered from COVID-19. We've seen the joy and excitement of graduates at virtual graduations. We've seen peaceful protests, marches across the nation and in other parts of the world. But we, we've also seen deaths and destruction. We've seen the rising and falling rates of COVID-19. We've seen violence on our streets. We've seen brutality in its cruelest form perpetrated on the defenseless. We continue to see emerging the ugly and evil heads of racism, injustice, and inequalities. It is in times like this that we need to hear from you. Lord, we, we know that lessons are learned through seasons like we are now going through. Seasons you had no hand in bringing about, but you use them for your glory. Lord, what should we learn from this season? Speak, speak, Lord. Speak to our situations. Speak to our circumstances. Speak to those who occupy the White House. Speak to those who serve in the halls of Congress. Speak to those who serve in state and local governments. Speak to those who are paid to serve and protect all people. Speak, God. Speak to your church. When you speak, things are set right. When you speak, hopelessness turns into hope, hatred into love, injustice into justice. When you speak, lives are changed. The lost find their way back to where you want them to be. Speak, Lord. When you speak, the sick are healed, the lowly are exalted, the mighty are humbled, the arrogant are put to shame. When you speak, hearts are filled with love and compassion. When you speak, all things are passed away and all things become new. When you speak, people from every station in life will realize that black lives do matter. And so, and Lord, after you shall have spoken, grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this hour. That's our prayer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Oh God, our sustainer, provider, protector, shelter, and waymaker, we come to you to ask for your help in a time of trouble. You who knows everything, knows what's going on in this nation and around the world. 
your sons and daughters whose ancestors were brought to these shores, who tore the ground and produced the wealth for their masters, find ourselves continuing to be the objects of their oppression and hatred. 401 years later, we find ourselves still being devalued. Lord, do you know the names of these modern day Martin, Michael Brown, Walter Scott, Philando Castile, Amadou Diallo, Philando Castile, Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and George Floyd, just to name a few. Lord, you made us in your image and in your likeness. You made us. But we live in a land where there are some who hate us because of our blackness. They kill us and attack us, driving while black, jogging while black, walking while black, sleeping while black, in fact, breathing while black. In their mind, our blackness is our pre-existing sickness. But you made us. In your infinite wisdom, you made us. And we know that you have never made a mistake. So we affirm before this nation and the world that black lives matter, that black is beautiful. So God, your black sons and daughters come to you asking you for divine intervention. Protect us, provide for us, shelter us, make a way for us. Father, we stretch our hands to you. No other help we know. We are disproportionately singled out by law enforcement because we are black. We are disproportionately unemployed because we are black. We are disproportionately incarcerated because we are black. We are disproportionately infected with coronavirus and other health infirmities because we are black. But, oh, God, in the midst of the hell we face, we still have this testimony. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, we praise you because you have not left us alone. You are on our side. And we are blessed because over the last several weeks, we've been able to see that you are raising up a new generation of blacks who are offering leadership to our people. They're standing, they're marching, they're speaking. They have declared enough is enough. We're not gonna take it anymore. All over this country, we've seen an army holding up signs lifting up their voices, standing for a cause. The police can't stop them. The National Guard can't stop them. The military can't stop them. Thank you, Lord, for turning what some meant for evil into good. Thank you because the sons and daughters of African descent will be used by you to redeem this nation to tear down the stronghold of racism, hatred, and evil. Thank you, Lord, for opening the eyes of the blind, where now whites are marching, standing, and affirming with us that black lives matter. Now, Lord, we know it's not over till you say it's over. We know it's just the beginning, but we are confident that he who has begun a good work in us will carry it on to completion. Thank you, Lord, and hear our prayer in the name of our conquering King, even Jesus. We ask these petitions, amen.
Praise the Lord. And thank you, Regina Jackson, for singing Yes, Safe uh, in His Arms. We're now going to have the next series of prayers. Praise God once again uh, to our colleagues at Council of Bishops for this call to prayer. Uh, we want to now go to the throne of grace with Bishop Clement Few, the presiding bishop of the 5th Episcopal District, Bishop John White, presiding uh, bishop for the 4th Episcopal District, uh, Bishop Ingram, uh, Bishop uh, Gregory Ingram, who is the presiding prelate of the 1st Episcopal District, and then Bishop John R. Bryant, senior bishop, retired. Please come in that order. Let's call on heaven once again. Amen. As I lift up selected verses from Isaiah chapter 53, I ask each of us to express prayers of thanksgiving for all who have, all who have suffered in our place to bring us to the place where we are in life and life more abundantly. Who has believed what we have heard and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've all turned our own way and the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. And who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgressions of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Father God, we claim our place vicariously in the suffering of those who bore travail and heartache and threats and abuse, that we might have a claim to life and that more abundantly. In your precious name we pray, amen. Let us pray. Lord, we're challenged by devastating news and ill will towards one another. The world is hurting uh, and people are angry, bitter, full of hate and distrust for one another. Father God, we are only answered to, this, to our dismay, destruction, racial turmoil, that we in the United States and around the world, Lord God, we pray for healing. Please heal the hearts of those involved who've lost loved ones and communities that are broken. Lord, we know that black lives matter. God, please shelter them under your wings of refuge. Lord, please remind us that you are in control, you hear our cry and moan with us during this exceedingly difficult times in America and around the world. Please, Lord, be with those families who've lost loved ones this month. Father God, bless the African Methodist Episcopal Church around the world. We thank you for blessing us to make a difference. Jesus, we need you now to come and heal the pains of history that have caused us so much turmoil because of the color of our skin. Come Holy Spirit, 
Come, Lord Jesus, come lift us to new levels of witnesses and service for all of your children. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. like these we need a savior god these are turbulent and trying times scurrilous sensitive and times when those who mean us no good will try to prevent us from actualizing what you have promised to us god we know that when the enemy will come in like a flood Lord will raise up a standard. So dear God, we come praying to you and thanking you for this day. Thank you, dear God, for see the marching blacks, but not only marching blacks for a tapestry, for a unique mosaic, for people from every walk of life, from every hue, from every station in life, for rich, for poor, for black, for white, for straights, for gays, for all those persons who are saying as they lift up their voices and raise their hands and saying, enough is enough. God, we are reminded, you said, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And so that God, we come praying for this nation. We come to God praying for those who have lost loved ones. We come to God praying and knowing that when, that when the earth's last picture is painted and the tubes are twisted and dry, when all the old colors have faded, and for the youngest critic had died. God, we come praying for those who have died, who have lost lives, who have lives have been snuffed out prematurely. God, we come praying for them. We come praying for the gardeners and the Blands and the Taylors and the Browns and the Floyds. Oh God, we come praying for them. Somehow, dear God, we hear you saying that there is a land of pure delight where saints immortal reign. Find our day, lose the night, one day pleasure will banish pain. But until that time, God, we come asking you to give us a fortitude, give us a faith, give us a faith that will not shrink, give us a tenacity, give us strength that we might continue to run on and see what the end is going to be. God, we come praying for this nation. And we come praying to God because you told us that there's power in prayer. God, we know not but what methods read, but with this was we know that God answered prayer. We know not the blessings sought would come in just the guys we thought. But we come believing that God, that we leave prayer to God alone, for your will is wiser than our own. God, we come praying that somehow in the midst of it all, you will let us know that God, that our efforts will not be in vain. God, we come praying for our church. Thank you for the leadership of our church. God, we thank you for every bishop and general officer. We thank you for every pastor, every lay person. We thank you for our missionaries. We thank you for our young people. But God, we come thanking you for the privilege that we can come and call on your name. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we come lifting up the banner. We come lifting up the cross because we know that the cross is higher than a flag. And God, we come believing that he who began a good work on us will perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. We come praying to God that great is he that is in us and he that is in the world. We come praying to God in the midst of turmoil, in the midst of uncertainty, in the midst of trying times, oh God, that you will reveal and manifest yourself. Pray for those whose hearts are, are heavy. Pray for those who are experiencing loss of loved ones. Somehow that God May they know that weeping may endure for a night, but somehow joy will come in the morning. God, we believe in, in the name of Jesus. The earth has no sorrow that somehow heaven cannot hear. But until that time, we're going to hold up the bloodstained banner. We're going to keep on believing that, God, that you will make a way out of no way. And then, oh, God, we come praying that not only because the character of God is good and that God is merciful, but we also know, God, that you are a compensatory God, and God does not like us. So, God, in the name of Jesus, we ask you, God, to intervene and 
We ask you, God, to touch the hearts. We ask you, God, to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. We believe in the God. You said wherever two or three are gathered together, touching and agreeing upon anything in your name. So we're touching and we're agreeing to God that somehow we're going to have the power to prevail. And we're not going to let anything or anybody turn us around. We believe that God, that the best is yet to come. So that God, as we collectively lift our voices and our prayers and our hands to you, we stretch forth our hands to your pilfia. God, we know that the one day the trees of heaven will clap their hands with joy. And until that time, that God, we're going to still believe. We're still going to have faith. We're still going to have hope. And because we know that our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. God, we thank you for those persons all over, not only the country, but all over the world, have decided to step over the line. And These are the ones who are turning this country upside down. And so, dear God, we're praying in the midst of it all that you will let the world know that nothing shall be withheld for those who love you. Until that time, we'll bless and praise your holy name. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We bless you. We glorify you. We give thanks to you, O oh great God. You are the one true and living God. And this afternoon we come with thanksgiving on our hearts. God, we thank you for being God because we've tried you over and over again. And you've always proven over and over again that you are God and beside you there is none other. Oh, God, we thank you in the name of Jesus that you were with this AME church 200 years ago when it had to fight a yellow fever. And here we are 200 years later, and we as African Methodists didn't panic because, God, we remembered that you always delivered us. And here we are as the curve is flattening out in this COVID-19 declaring unto you, Lord, you've done it again, and we say thank you. We say thank you, God, because there is nothing too hard for you. We say thank you, God, for even as we've had to deal with COVID-19, we also have to deal with another virus called racism. But you brought us through that. Hallelujah. Time and time again, God, you've been there for us. You made a way for us when our enemies sought to undo us. You are liberated and you empowered and you set us free. And we come tonight, oh God, as lay people and clergy, all in one accord saying to you, thank you for being our God. Thank you for being a God, hallelujah, that can do anything but fail. Now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we also want to thank you that during this season for the leadership of Bishop Seawright, who has led us through this pandemic, and he has led us through the pandemic praying in the name of Jesus. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, for Bishop Mitchell, who's getting ready to take the realms of the council and lead us on. We know, God, that who and whichever one of us leads, the victory will be there because you are in charge. God, we thank you with all of our heart, soul, and mind, and strength. And we pledge to you once again, God, our eyes are on you, and we will follow you wherever we you direct. We will not doubt. We will not live in fear. But we will have hope and celebration and thanksgiving in our hearts because you are God who never fails. Thank you, Lord. In the strong name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Bishop Bryant. Uh, we now come to the point where we have an opportunity to present our president of the Council of Bishops, Bishop Harry L. Seawright, 
<laughs> who is the Episcopal servant in the Ninth Episcopal District. We praise God uh, for his vision and leading us to exercise our spiritual discipline, discipline of prayer with our constituency. Now, uh, Bishop C. Wright, please share your remarks and lead us in prayer. Thank you, Bishop McKenzie. As we come to this moment, we greet you in Jesus' name, and we want to take this opportunity to thank you for being a wonderful moderator today. Thank our senior bishop for all of the leadership that he has given to us and to the African Methodist Episcopal Church in general. Also, I want to thank uh, Bishop Samuel Lawrence Green for organizing this prayer line along with his son, Reverend Sam uh, Green, Jr., uh, Samuel Green, Jr., and to uh, Reverend Dr. Sears, thank you for your leadership on the Zoom call. Everybody, thank you for your friendship, brotherhood, sisterhood, everything that you have rendered to us this past year. We praise God for the power of prayer. And as we come today, we will continue to pray for one another. At this time, let us pray. Dear God, it is so ironic that here we are a week after Pentecost, where 120 people gathered together in an upper room and you came with your power and breathed on death and caused the re revolution. God, today, here now, over a thousand people gather one week later on a prayer call, praying all over the nation, praying that you will give us the power to enact another revolution. God, we are not just coming praying but we know that our weapons are not kind of, but they are mighty for the pulling down of strongholds. Oh God, there's so much going on in the world and it's already been stated in many prayers. Names have been called prayers prayed and dear God, we know that no prayers will ever go unheard. We come this moment praying to our heavenly father who promises us that you answer prayers because you told us don't be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, let our requests be made known unto you. So God, we come today also believing that you have given us the power, an extraordinary power, a power that has placed super in, the fr in front of our natural. So dear God, we are expecting a supernatural move as the protests and marches are taking place. We expect something supernatural to happen simply because we are moving into the supernatural realm. We believe, God, that with you all things are possible, that you can do everything but fail. And today, God, we pray that you will continue to touch our bishops, touch our pastors, touch our leaders. Lord God, touch our preachers, our minister. Don't let none of us get weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. God, thank you for how far you brought us all. You brought us from a mighty long ways. When we look back over our history, we have to rejoice that you have brought us every step of the way. We continue to trust you. We believe you. And oh, dear God, continue to do your thing. We live with the promises today that if we abide in you, and your word abide in us. You told us we can ask whatever we want and you would do it. Oh God, yes, hear our prayers today. Bless us in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much uh, to our president of the Council of Bishops and uh, leading us in prayer. Uh, before our last prayer and our closing psalmist, we want to thank uh, the behind the scenes team, uh, those who have the tech crew who have been working hard uh, to be sure that everything uh, went smooth. When things are alive and you're depending upon technology, we love it when it works and we hate it when it doesn't. And I thank uh, the, uh, this team for working very hard today. So uh, I want to thank uh, Bobby Cage, Reverend Samuel Green Jr., Rashawn Young, Reverend Crystal Sears, Joy Marie Hunter, Herbert Jenkins, and Craig Seans, uh, Sears, Reverend Jasmine St. John, and Reverend Amos St. John. We also want to thank not the 18th district, but the 20th Episcopal district, the, the choir that sang earlier. Uh, the Jackals family is from the 15th district, 
And our final psalmist uh, this evening will be the Reverend Amos St. John from the 10th Episcopal District. Thank you uh, to our senior Bishop, Bishop Richardson. Thank you again to our president, uh, C. Wright, and thank you, uh, Bishop Green, uh, for helping to facilitate uh, our prayer call uh, at the first of the month. Thank you to all of the nearly a thousand people who are now on Facebook and those of you who are on Zoom. Beloved, more than ever, we want peace. And the more peace we want, the more peace seems to elude us. We envision countries where people of every hue and ethnic origin are free to live together without fear and prejudice. We dream of communities where poverty does not limit joyful living. We desire neighborhoods where bigotry and fear are not allowed to live. We want places where our children can grow and flourish into positive and productive adults. We want places where mercy and justice are daily realities. The more we want it, the more it seems to elude us and wanting is not the same as working for it. And so after we, after we pray today, we have to continue to work for it. And protest comes in many ways. Some people take to the streets and others take to uh, communication and writing and others take to grassroots organization and others speak truth to power. And whatever the platform or pulpit that God gives you to be able to work after we have prayed, now is the time for us to go to work. Amen. Now let us bow our heads yet one more time and let us look to the Lord in prayer. Vindicate me, O oh God, and plead my case against an ungodly nation. O oh, deliver us from the deceitful and the unjust. Eternal God Almighty, from whom all the earth's nations and people have been made, we we appreciate the diversity of your creation and the wide spectrum of hues, kindred, and tribes. We appreciate that we come from many walks and ways of life, and apart we long to be one, and together we rejoice in our diversity. And teach us to probe beneath the surface, beyond skin tones and external divergencies, to the substance of who you created us to be. Lead us to find the harmony that unites us and establish us into one communion of peace and respect. Lead us to value the worth of humanity, excluding none, none, none of our brothers and sisters. Help us to find common ground and a common agenda so that unresolved issues do not derail the beloved community of the Apostle John. Help us to do the work and make the necessary sacrifices to build a strong community and a strong country. Let us join hands, black and white and red and yellow and brown to build a strong community and a strong country. Remember us now, Lord, and remember our children, our sons and our daughters. May their lives be not sacrificed for nothing. And so today, Lord, we remember Rakia Boyd and Eric Garner and Dante Hamilton and John Crawford and Michael Brown. Oh, we pray that their lives were not sacrificed in vain. We pray for Ezel Ford and Dante Parker and Tamir Rice and Tanisha Anderson and Akia Khoury and Romaine Bisdom and Jerome Reed. May their living not be in vain. We remember Walter Scott and Freddie Gray and Philando Castile and Alton Sterling and Natasha McKinnon and Yvette Smith and Jordan Davis. May their living not be in vain. We remember Trayvon Martin and Stefan Clark. May their living not be in vain. We remember the students uh, slaughtered at Sandy Hook and Parkland High School. May their living not be in vain. We remember the Emmanuel Nine and Brianna Taylor and George Floyd and, and Ahmed Arbery. May their living not be in vain. Remember us, Lord, when trials come rushing in, how like floodwaters from a dam. Remember us when criticism earned and deserved or undeserved overwhelm our resolve. Remember us when we sink into the hell of racism. Remember us when we fall into the traps of mental terrors. Remember us today, Lord, when we fall into the hands of enemies and those who mean us no good. Oh, God, empower us to stand against the temptations of an immoral and an up culture and immoral leadership wherever 
it is found. Remember us today. Hallelujah. When we find ourselves guilty of what Gandhi calls the seven social sins, politics without principle, wealth without work, commerce without morality, pleasure without conscience, education without character, silence without humanity, worship without sacrifice. Let us rise this day to become heralds of your righteousness, bearers of peace and agents of your love. And it is in the strong name of Jesus Christ, we pray and together let the whole church say amen. Come on church, say amen. Let's put our hands together and bless God and say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory amen. to God. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. It is okay to praise God now. It's okay to bless God for this day of prayer.